almost on a lark as a part of the conversation if i remember one of the franchises i don't know if it was um, i don't recollect who it was so i said saying you know why don't we auction them like uh, the christies does yeah it will make a lot of consumer interest and that's that decided yeah. it. that's it another thing that people don't know and that always this by the way is one of my favorite sort of dinner party stories because it always gets people going what are you talking about when i tell them how many people actually run the ipl and by that i mean proper ipl employees your core team so just to give people an idea there's 60 games every season some seasons there've been more uh you have them happening over 8 to 10 venues there is a huge broadcast machinery there are decisions of all kinds to be taken on sponsors marketing logistics travel catering VIPs, ticketing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and how many people within the IPL actually run all of this? We had a pretty large team. I, <laughs> I, uh, including myself, there were a total of four people. Four people running. Say it again. F I P O U R. Yeah, four, four, F O U R. That's correct. And we used to work with almost hundred and thirty or hundred and forty different um, external uh, players, plug and play. and and managing that itself is is a big task and it worked very well for us because the the hierarchy of decision making was pretty flat yeah and since we didn't have time to think we just had to keep deciding and moving on we were not for once worried about whether this is the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do politically we said if this is the right thing for the fans if the right thing for the game there's the right thing for the league let's go ahead and do it mm. and and that that saved us a lot of uh uh Uh, heartburn in in the end analysis as we sit here and talk today the fact is some of these foundation stones were laid pretty early on without knowing they were foundation stones so to speak like uh take for example the um thing about the player auction yeah yeah um we've had conversations about the player auctions from time to time you've you've been on camera discussing the strategies yeah. and and uh, and and uh, what should teams do it almost came out as as a part of an evening tea conversation while we were doing 100000 things sold the franchises we've uh, confirmed the start date we know the venues and the and the teams now it was left to how do we get the players rostered in into each of the teams mm. the only thing sure was the marquee players who were assigned to a set of franchises icon players like players, they were icon called players, that time that's yes that's right so there was uh, sachin tendulkar for mumbai because the belief and rightly so or sachin can't play for any other team correct he has to play only for mumbai yeah and uv has to play for punjab, punjab and, uh, and dada virendra sevak for uh, delhi. delhi and dada of course for calcutta and, and uh, interestingly in all of this there's one guy who's fallen through the net because he's from ranchi he has just won the t20 world cup for india he is at pretty much the peak of his stardom everybody loves him and uh, here he is yeah without a team without without a home so mm-hmm. to speak and what did he do he's made chennai his home and is 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 their adopted son isn't he it's it's a lifelong eternal romance it's he's what do they call him thala thala which is thala thala means the head the yeah. the, the younger the brother part. right because thalaiwa is rajnikanth that thalaiwa be... is the leader yeah. thala is the head okay thala is the head it's like you are the chief you are the head but he reports to thalaiwa right yeah. <laughs> the hierarchy is that thalaiwa comes uh, first and then is thala I'm sure MS doesn't mind being second to Rajnikanth in Chennai. Nobody I does. I don't think anybody does. Uh, half of India <laughs> doesn't for sure. Yeah. So the challenge of because the other half loves Kamal Hassan. So <laughs> that, oh yes, of course, right. fine line. <laughs> <laughs> the the challenge of the auction was was one of those conversations that that few of us were having. There was Lalit. There was a few franchises, and there was set of the operating management people. We said, listen, how do we take this franchisee taking on players? and almost on a lark as a part of the conversation if i remember one of the franchises i don't know if it was um i don't recollect who it was so i said saying you know why don't we auction them like uh, the christies does yeah he said uh, there was a couple of minutes of deliberation and you know they are people not paintings <laughs> more valuable i guess so i yeah. said it's a good idea it will make a lot of consumer interest and that's that decided yeah. it. that's it and it's great for the players and that also establishes a fair market price there is no uh, you know i will pay you later main tujhe ghar gaadi bangla dunga all that is <laughs> yeah. is 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 out of the equation yeah 
the only set of players who we did not put in the auction were the uncapped players at that point in time. The interesting story is around $5 million was a salary purse for the players at that time. The icon player was not fixed a salary. He would get 15% more than the highest paid player in your team Beautiful. at the end of the auction. Beautiful. And then there was this very interesting auction that was going on, people putting up their paddle and the, the highest paid player was obviously going to get 15% more than the, the, play, the player that was, was going to get. Chennai did not bid for, uh, didn't have an icon player. So they were a little more free to bid for uh, the player of, of choice. And the Indian captain, the T20 form then went to Chennai because there was no surcharge, so to speak, or GST speed, so to speak, at that right, point right. in time on it. So. Yeah, because everybody else is watching out because you can't go that much further because then you've got to pay 15% extra to the player you already have sitting with you. And you had a $5 million salary purse. Yeah, and that's very important as well because it's all sort of a process of elimination because you can pay a lot for one player and then you'll have nothing left to make the rest of your team. So that's where the strategy came in and that is one of the most fascinating parts of the IPL actually of the auction to watch is not just how much you're paying for a player, is how much will be left. And that is in a strange way, it's such a, it's, it's so democratic and it becomes such a level playing field because some of the heavy hitters that you have sitting on those tables are people who have supremely deep pockets and, you know, money's no object. But suddenly you're saying, wait, you have pocket money. Yes. So <laughs> you can't just buy all your classmates ice cream because then you won't have any lunch money left on day six of the week. How much you had in your bank didn't matter in that room. How yeah. much you carried to that room or given to enter that room is all that mattered. Interestingly, that was also the year India had won um, just a month ago or before the auction or thereabouts, had won the Under-19 Cricket World Cup. Oh, and yes. that was uh, captained by Virat Kohli. Yeah. And here was this auction. The main auction was over and we said for the Under-19 players, we'll keep a separate draft, which happened a few days later. Surprise, surprise. And, and that squad was, was big. I, if I remember that squad, there was uh, Virat Kohli, of course, the captain. There was uh, Ravinda Jadeja. There was Manish Pandey and quite a few other players. The big surprise, and, and we all are richer in our hindsight, Virat Kohli was not the first player to be picked in the draft. And also, Delhi passed on him, actually. And Delhi picked Pradeep Sangwan instead. That's correct. That's correct. Because uh, they said, we don't need a batsman. And they didn't actually that time because... Uh, they didn't because they had Virinder Sevag, A.B. De Villiers. So they're right in that thinking. Of course, Delhi's made many missteps after that by letting all these people go. But at that time, you can understand why they didn't take Virat Kohli. And then RCB picked him up. And the rest, as they say, is history. For many more stories like this, join me on 22 Yarns, a Spotify original.